I want to talk to you uh, about Australia and its future in renewable energy. Let's start off ambitiously. This graph shows the years 2030 and 2050 and its predictions for where Australia could be. Um, it's based on the national energy market being 100% fueled by renewable sources. Uh, as you may be wondering why there's four columns. This is split into two scenarios. S1 columns are for scenario one, which is for rapid technological advances and moderate economic uh, landscape from now until those years. And scenario two is for moderate technological advances and a good economic climate until then. So we can see that we've got some different costs for the different years and different scenarios. But what's uh, clear on face value is that they're all in the hundreds of billions of Australian dollars, so it's not going to be cheap. This graph is put together assuming that we're going to meet 99.99% of all energy demands that the Australian people have, and it uses uh, assessed measurements of the resources in different locations to help format these predictions. Another conclusion to be drawn from it is that we need a good mix of different technologies. I can see for each column there's 10. This is because these technologies can be split into three categories. We need a base layer of technologies which is constantly running and constantly supplying the grid with electricity. This comes from geothermal, for gas, and biomass. These will always be running near capacity. On top of this uh, base layer, we have three more um, weather dependent sources, which are our PV, wind, and wave. And finally, to meet peak demands, we have uh, hydroelectricity, concentrated solar, and biogas. When uh, demands peak, the weather dependent technologies can't deal with it, and we need extra electricity inputs. So, this is a far future. Let's return a bit more closer to where we are now. And I'm showing you here a map of Australia with the current proposals, well, the proposals by the government as of May 2012. There are 303 of these in total. What we can see from this is that it's dominated by wind. Uh, there's 20 of these 300 proposals that they have with May of 2012. Um, <laughs> sorry. 20 of these proposals are 200 megawatt or larger, and 18 out of these 20 are wind. One wind farm that I've circled for you in red, called Silverton, is one gigawatt proposal, which is massive. That corresponds to about 500 turbines. So, we've just seen the proposals um, that the government have. How are we going to get there? What's the financial incentive immediately? for consumers and for electricity retailers. Well, incentive may be the wrong word, technically, because the government has introduced legisla legislation making electricity retailers buy their electricity from a certain amount uh, of renewable sources. They've done this by introducing certificates. We've got large-scale generation certificates, which power stations generate. They get certificates which are directly proportional to the megawatt their capacity output and then electricity retailers must buy a certain amount of these certificates per year. Homeowners can also uh, benefit from this system if they install their own PV panels, uh, hydro system or have a small turbine in their backyard they can generate small scale technology certificates, STCs, and these can also be sold to the electricity retailers and as with the LGCs Electricity retailers are legally bound to buy a certain amount of these per year. So, in conclusion, the Australian government is clearly proactive in towards reaching uh, a Kyoto Protocol uh, target of reducing of 20% um, renewable energy by the year 2020. It's doing this by creating demand in renewable energy by introducing certificates. And it's also got some over 300 proposals for new power stations as of May 2012. The slide I showed you at the start may seem a little far off, so it's not realistic that we 
are going to reach 100% renewables by the year 2030 because of the cost, if nothing else. But it's good to see that they are proactive at the moment. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, can you go back to the first slide? Uh, can you explain the two scenarios here, please? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. So S1 and S2, and they've both got their years. Right. Scenario 1 is assuming a rapid advance in technologies. Right. So we're improving efficiencies of everything dramatically. And, um, but there's not as much money to be spent on it because there's only a, a moderate economic climate from now until 2030 and 2050. And S2 is the opposite, where we make some moderate advances in technology, but we've got a lot of money to spend. So you can see uh, in the S2 columns that we there's a large amount of wind, which um, fits in with what I'm saying in the way that wind is, at the moment, is an efficient technology. So uh, there may not be as many advances we can make in it, but we've got a lot of money and we can increase it straight away. Um, this graph shows the annual generator for the year, right? Uh, this graph is for um, so the total, the total. Oh, on the on the, on the yeah, y-axis. Yeah. Yeah. So how? Why is it that in S two, yeah, whether it's twenty thirty or twenty fifty, there is higher generation? Oh, so why are we using more energy in yeah. twenty fifty? Even though there's a there's a less technological advance and slower on the top. Uh, there's this S2 columns with different heights correspond to the same scenario, so it would just mean that we... Yeah, I know, but the 2030 for S2 is higher than the 2030 for S1. 2030 for S2 is higher than 2030 for S1. So oh, I see what you mean. That's because uh, with the um, high economic climate, it means that we'll be have a higher demand for electricity. It's part of the scenario where We've got higher. If we've got if we generate if the Australians are, uh, are generating a lot of money to develop technologies, the assumption is that they will be uh, needing more electricity as well, just because of the economics. So S two is the one with the high. Yeah. Global advancement. No, uh, S two is the one with the high um, economic, economic environment, environment which yeah. would imply more electricity. Less demand. Yeah. Less technological advance. Yeah. So you have less lower efficiency. So, so you can spend more uh, on the already efficient win. Yeah, you're right. Okay, thank you very much.